So the other day, I'm watching an old movie based on an Orson Welles radio play. You've heard of him, haven't you? Yep, been known to read occasionally. Good. Because here's the thing, right? He did a radio play called War of the Worlds. And I thought, that's an interesting little film. That's an interesting little idea. But then I realised that it actually happened. Gee whiz, catch up. Say, can I catch a break here? Anyhow, it was prior to TV, so everyone sitting around their front room, glued to the radio. Wow, interesting. Tell me if you know this story, right? You'll be the first to know. So, okay, so it begins normally enough, and it goes for a while when suddenly it's interrupted by breaking news. We interrupt this broadcast with news that a mysterious green glowing spacecraft has been reported by Mac and Mabel Citizen of Dry Gulch Gully in Redneck Hills. And police are on their way to investigate. Stand by for further updates. Meanwhile, back to your program. Really? Wow. Amazing. Then, five minutes later, another breaking news interruption. Horror! Uh, screams can be heard in an announcement that the Martians are invading. And here's the thing, right? The people believed it. Well, they had all the proof they needed. They heard it on the radio. Like it's the gospel truth. So what happened? Um, absolute panic. It ended up that the police had to kick down the doors of the recording booth and get all the actors to tell everyone that it was just a hoax. Wow, that is incredible. How gullible were people back then? Well, see, here's the thing. It's the same today, except today, it's the TV. I saw it on the TV, so it must be true. Well, I don't believe everything I hear about Kim Kardashian, even though I pay attention to everything that is said. Well, this started making me think, what exactly can I believe in or should we believe in just because it's on TV? So here's the thing, right? If you don't believe in everything you see on TV, if you question what you see on TV, then I have a question. What's the temperature of outer space? Near absolute zero or minus 273 Celsius. <laughs> what? I don't act so surprised. I mean, we can't all put up focus on Kim Kardashian. I mean, how cold is that? Um, nothing compared to liquid nitrogen, which is minus, um... 196 degrees Celsius. Wow, I can't believe you knew that. Don't act so surprised. Okay, so where was I? Oh yeah, liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen is minus 196 degrees Celsius. And, um, how cold is that? Well, when you get a rose and you dip it into liquid nitrogen, it, um... It, it snap freezes. Touch it. And it crumbles into dust. But the temperature of outer space is so much colder. Like, minus 273 degrees. Celsius. So when Apollo 11 was orbiting the moon and when the astronaut left on board, Michael Collins, when he gets around to the dark side, he would have automatic, uh, automatically been, been snap frozen. Snap frozen to death. But here's the big thing, right? He comes back from the Apollo mission alive and well. Um, now, how is that possible? They never went to the moon. Biggest hoax in human history. It's quite a theory. But temperature's not a theory. So why the Pacific's on the dark side of the moon? Because on the dark side of the moon, there's no sunlight. Wow! Cool. So now when people ask, what does your boyfriend do? I can say, He's an artist. He creates. 